Who of you ever dropped their phone into the toilet? Raise your hand. We have a very brave person there. Another one. Very good. Probably we have some dark numbers here. According to a study, 75% of all people use their smartphone while sitting on the toilet. <laughs> if you go to the generation Y, this number goes up to 91%. That includes me. Now, if you connect that fact to another fact, that you have more and more people on the street running into your bike or car while staring at the smartphone, it seems like that we want to combine for any sort of activity we don't need our brain with some sort of media consumption. Now in our panel today we want to talk about podcasts. The format that seems to fit into this so perfectly because you can listen to it while doing any other activity aside. And the numbers also back that up. More than 60% of all podcast listeners primarily use their smartphone to listen to podcasts while doing something else like laundry, biking to work, at the side. So let me introduce you our panelists for today. Our first panelist dedicated her whole life to media and communication. She was an audio addict as a child. She studied communication and she marketed audiobooks for Sutej Zeitung and other media houses. Today, she is the managing director of a podcast called Zebra Audio Networks. Please welcome. Tina Jürgens. Our next participant. I lost my voice. Okay. Our next participant is turning. Is it me? Yeah. Our next participant is a master in turning his passion into his profession. He's been a big basketball fan before he turned into a professional player and played second league for eight years. He's always been a huge podcast fan, and now he is the head of Podstars at OMR, a podcast network that you might know for their famous conference. Please welcome on stage, Vincent Kidman. <laughs> Our third panelist, you might know already. If you ever watched Die Höhle der Löwen, you have seen him already in television. Florian is the founder of Happy Brush, a startup for electric toothbrush. Next to living in Brazil, France, Austria, and China, he discovered his love for podcasts while living in the US. With Happy Brush, he collected a lot of experience how to use podcasts for advertising to market your product. Please welcome on stage, Florian Kina. Now, before we start with the first question, I, would, uh, I have a question for the audience. Who in the audience is an active podcast listener? That's basically the whole audience. There's a couple of people sitting there in the middle. OK, very good. So then we don't need to explain what a podcast is. But I would still like to know, uh, maybe from you, Tina, mm -hmm. what makes podcasts special as a medium compared to other entertainment formats? I think that it has two sides to it, really. Um, on the content side, I believe it's sort of the new rock and roll because you can do a podcast on anything with any length and in any frequency. And people would listen to it at any time and wherever they want. So that gives you lots of liberty and that is fun, you know? Um, and on the other side, I believe that as a marketeer, as a brand, as a, as a company, you can target your audience pretty effectively because it's so, uh, such a broad range of subjects. And on the other hand as well, I think you have a super focused target group. They listen to everything until the end. They're quite loyal and they are also because of that very special relationship between a host and their audience, they are very open and even willing to listen to your brand information, your product information. And studies show that 
people would actually go to the website, inform themselves about your product, and actually buy it. So the conversion rates for marketeers are very impressive. Okay. Thank you very much. Before we jump into the advertising part, um, I, I looked at the numbers and it seems that like in the last years there has been a very steep rise in, in podcasts. Podcasts have been around for, for more than 15 years. Is there a special reason why now podcast takes off so much? Um, yeah, we always uh, say it has uh, three reasons. Um, the one reason is the content quality is um, so good, and um, it was always good, but it's getting even better because uh, the podcast business is getting more professional, and the, the media houses who, who make podcasts are um, yeah, taking more care to build good podcasts. Um, the media um, consumption on demand is well known now on, on Spotify, Netflix, and so on. So everybody wants to consume his uh, medium or his podcast as whenever he wants, and the podcast is able to, to deliver that. And um, like you said at the, right at the beginning um, of this uh, panel, um, more and more people are having their smartphone in their hands um, all the time. Um, you have more data volume on your phone, you have your um, headphones with you all the time, so it's um, easier to listen to podcasts. Uh, whenever you, I don't know, in the in the uh, in the gym and while you're running or when you're going to work, um, or also while the while you're cooking or something like that, so it's really easy to to listen to it. Mm -hmm. And I think it also was this big hype with Serial, uh, the podcast um, about two um, true crime cases actually, and it was an investigative journalism podcast. Uh, that was made, I think, very impressively, and people got sort of hooked to it and were binge listening to that. It's a new phenomenon as well. That's actually uh, that's actually quite interesting because Serial was the podcast that like was the first real podcast that I listened from beginning to the very end, and I I read that um, like Serial they were connected to This American Life, which is also a very famous podcast, and I read there were some legal issues. Uh, when This American Life tried some advertising where they actually put product placement inside of, of the podcast. And so it was not very clear that this is advertising and there were some legal issues. So that brings me to my next question. How does advertising in the podcast actually work? What kind of advertising is there in, in podcasts? It's always very native. So the the, the, the host is speaking the, the advertising uh, yeah by himself. Um, mostly they say okay now it's it's time for the for the commercial break or let's all sponsor for the recent episode. Um, yeah, th th these are um, things that the host is saying, and then we, they have a um, briefing which is uh, consists of um, certain bullets, and they really say it uh, on the on the native uh, in a native way because um, we want to keep it as um, as authentic as possible. Um, so because it, they don't, they sh shouldn't change their voice or how they speak uh, in the advertisement, because um, yeah, we wanted to do it like that. The, how the how the listener knows the host. Uh, that's um, yeah, really really important. And uh, that's um, then he he's telling the the commercial like he, he usually um, is ta talking. I think that what Vincent has said is that you know people would believe the host mm -hmm. if he's using his own or her own words. Of course, there are podcasts, there are much more like journalistic podcasts or maybe fictional podcasts, and you cannot, you know, let the journalist say, okay, I use Casper. Um, that would, wouldn't be too good, I think. So there, of course, is also the possibility to have sponsored reads, like at the beginning of, a, of an episode saying, okay, this episode is sponsored by, and it has to be sort of announced so that there will be no legal issues with that, and especially with fictional podcasts. I mean, if you have a crime podcast, a fictional one, and the murderer says, yes, I'm using the knife of WMF now because it's so efficient, <laughs> I don't think it would work. So for that also, I think you would rather take the sponsored treat for that. Okay, yeah, that's a very nice example of yeah. uh, brand safety Thank you very yes. much. I was getting to that, but I think Although, you covered it really well. I think it's rather well. interesting, though. Yeah, you should try in that. interesting, but the question is, does it help? So um, from, from your experience as someone who used podcasts to actually advertise, we have heard about like two different ways. One is like the host actually promotes the product in a clear way as an advertisement. The other one is just like just a pre-roll, like an advertisement break. Do you have any experience... Like, does it make a difference for you as an advertiser 
one yeah. or the other? Well, definitely it does. Um, I think native still works best. F I mean, there, there are a lot of studies out there that, that show that. Um, but also the authentic authenticity of, um, of the host and, and the brand fit. So as an example, we did a very um, successful campaign with, or the most successful campaign ever with the, the back then Sex Vergnügen pod podcast, which is now uh, Besser Sex. Um, and the two girls, the two hosts, they, they loved our product. Um, and, and that was a big part of the success uh, of this campaign because they were so um, honest and, and, and recommended it. They're still um, big fans today. Um, while, for example, Dunkle Heimat, which is uh, um, a, a different podcast, um, I think it's from Antenne Bayern, um, it did not, you know, in terms of uh, performance, it didn't work because the whole content is, uh, you know, it doesn't fit with the brand. The brand is, is happiness, um, it's, uh, you know, joy, um, and it's, yeah, totally different from, from what the content in, in is. And, and it didn't work because there, there wasn't a fit between the, the target group and our target group, but also because the, the content didn't fit to our, to our brand values. Really, I also believe that the matching, uh, the magic is in the matching of the content, uh, the, the subject of the podcast, the target group and the host and the brand and the product. It can work beautifully, but if the matching isn't right, the fit isn't right, then it won't work. And I mean, there are, I mean, you did, uh, Omar did a, a study on conversion rates and stuff, and it's quite impressive, but these figures you only get like 30% go on your website and about up to 13% it was by the product. I mean, these are impressive figures, but you can only reach that if the matching is right and your brand and your product fits the podcast. Mm -hmm. So how can I picture that if you say like 30% go on your website, that's an impressive number, that's really a, a good conversion rate. But like, if I look, if I think about a performance channel, I cannot believe that people like hit the brakes of their bike and like take out the app and install an app, right? Like a last click immediately performance campaign. So I think more about branding. Is that correct? Is podcast a branding channel? I think it's both. It's a performance and branding channel because uh, performance is kind of easy to, to implement in the podcast if you do, um, have a promotion code or something like that. We talked to, to Midroll Media, which is one of the biggest media house, um, podcast agency and a podcast media house in, in America, and they say their business is 90% performance uh, performance ads. They also like branding. It's also, it's also coming uh, with an uh, within performance ad. Um, I, would, I wouldn't say 90%. It's, um, it surprised me that it's um, that high. Um, I would say probably a little lower. Um, but you can do both, and um, the the most important thing is uh, that it, that uh, podcast advertising is sticky, so you remember it. And even though um, yeah, when you're at home and you finish your bike ride, uh, then you uh, still remember what you heard and think about it, and then you go on the website, so the conversion still um, yeah still completes. And I think there can also be like two approaches to it. You can approach it via your target group and say, okay, I'm looking for men about. 25 years of age, tech interested, and you would find podcasts for that. Or you can say, okay, I'm interested, I want to be affiliated with a certain subject. Um, and that is something I think most important for branding or brand awareness. If you have a new product or you have want to have a relaunch of your image, then you will be rather attached to a certain subject and would promote it there. So I also believe that it can be both. And then again, there's also the possibility of having corporate podcasts. I mean, you as a as a, having a, a company, you communicate your your product informations or the contents via podcast as well. Would you like? Is that something that you offer? Like, do you help yeah, people creating their own podcasts? We do as conception. A we do uh, consulting for that for strategies for companies to sort of make an and rather an audio strategy because we also believe we distribute um, also audiobooks. We believe in podcasts, but also we talked yesterday about voice. Um, we also believe in that. So actually, it's rather an audio strategy than only a podcast strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we said it's both branding and performance. So I want to I want to focus a little bit more on the performance part. So 
if you talk about performance, you immediately have in mind on one side what's a CPM or what's a CPA or CPO, whatever you want to want to do, and then on the other side, how can I actually measure that? So how does it work with a podcast? If you use a podcast, how could you measure the success of your campaign? Well, as um, Vince just said, you measure it through traffic. Um, so you have a, an, an URL in, in, the, in the spot, and then you have a promotion code, and then you track the traffic that is on your landing page, and then um, obviously the conversions. Um, that's, that's the most obvious part, and I think uh, we're going to talk about that later. But um, that's probably, from a brand perspective, uh, it's still a big issue because um, there are the the only things you can really measure are traffic and and and, and conversion rate. Uh, anything else? So, how long did the listener listen to your spot? Um, did he listen to the whole um, episode? Um, when did he listen to it? Um, all these things are you can't you, you can't measure. And and I mean, the market is evolving and developing, but um, for us or as a, as a brand, it's still um, yeah. That's the most most critical point. But what, were you still successful? Could you say that you were able to measure it well enough that you yeah. say the, the channel worked? Well, it depends. Um, as I said, we had successful campaigns and not successful campaigns. Testing is something that helps. Um, we definitely had a positive ROI on, on the on the Sex for Genügen podcast, but um, there are other podcasts that we did um, and, and tested. And I think the most important thing is um, the, the target group fit. So whether um, the audience is willing to engage with your brand or not. And uh, you, you can't really, at the moment, it's really hard for us as a brand to, to say that upfront, um, even though you have a great consultants here um, that, that give you advices. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, it's still very hard for us um, to, to, to see whether it's a fit or not. Okay. So from the testing part, I, I want to add a question to that because I think it's it's it really important to understand when you go into the space what what do you have to expect, right? It first sounds like perfect match, high conversion rate is the dream. It's the perfect medium, and you say like testing. So I, as I understand, you first need to figure out which is actually the the good a good match to you. So how much? Time do you have to invest? What's the rate? Like, if how many podcasts work again, and how many do you have to test to find out? What was your experience? Well, we are a small startup. We don't have as much budget as their clients or other clients, um, as Casper or whatever. Um, so we are very hesitant in 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 testing or spending too much on testing. Um, my approach is always listen to the podcast first. So if you know, these guys um, suggest 10 podcasts that might fit. I listen to them. Um, I try to, you know, get a feeling for for the audience. I try to see whether the 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 host, how the host performs the native ads. I, I get in touch with the brands that did um, uh, some some campaigns before, and if there are similar brands, then obviously there's a there's a higher probability that it that it work. Um, yeah, and and I think that's that's the that's the approach. Okay. Yeah, I would also say that this is the, the best approach you can have. I mean, we meet with our partners and try to find out what is what the what the interest actually is. So if we have a feeling what they are actually looking for, then we um, try to uh, select a couple of podcasts. But we all always say, okay, listen to an episode. Uh, try to find out whether this is a good fit, whether you feel comfortable as a brand with that sort of podcast, with the content, but also with the host. Sometimes, even sometimes there is, you know, you, you feel that you're not comfortable with the host or how he, you know, performs. So that actually is are the first steps, and then you would test it in one episode. As Vincent had, has said, we, we, we um, consult with the briefing. We try to give approaches to how you could figure that out so that it is believable what the um, host says. So um, what, I, what if I want to scale that approach? So having a very specific target group, a very high conversion rate, that sounds fantastic. And that you always can have that also with other channels. But usually the problem that you have is you have it with very low numbers, and then if you try to scale that up, your conversion rate goes down a lot. Is that a problem that we also have with podcasts? And if not, why not? 
Well, I would, would, uh, I would uh, prefer or would, would say to the advertisers um, that it's definitely possible to scale it, but um, I wouldn't be um, that bullish to, um, to say, okay, now we have to be in every episode. Uh, because then it um, can be a little yeah, overwhelming for the listeners. So what what Casper did, um, everybody talking about Casper as an example for a good uh, podcast advertisement, and um, we we do the OMR podcast, and everybody's saying Casper's in every episode, but they're not. Actually, they, they only take uh, less than ten percent of the of the spots we had uh, in, a, in the in the time frame they they made advertisement. But it was so yeah, sticky that it, um, that that everybody remembered it. So um, they choose. Um, the strategy to uh, do some ads in, in, in a recent uh, in, in, a, in a time frame, um, but there are always uh, breaks in between. But it was so sticky that uh, it was really effective for them. I think their their focus is more on branding and, and less on, on performance. Um, that's one point. And I think why everybody thinks that Casper is in every um, OMR um, um, podcast because they, I mean, they are in, in every other podcast, yeah. and that's why you you know associate uh, that that. That the brand is in, in your podcast in every single. But, but they are very performance driven. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's different for the OMR podcast because, um, because uh, the host. I mean, if anybody knows the uh, OMR podcast and, and, and the Casper advertising, Philip also talks about that Casper is a great company and that they have a great, great investment structure. So that's also branding for them, of course. Yeah. So is this stickiness? We, we had the term a lot. Is this stickiness in podcast? Is it mainly achieved to like high frequency? Like basically, you are present all the time. And no, I wouldn't say that. I would say that it depends on how the host is actually uh, communicating the message. So if it's very believable, I mean, if you look at a podcast like Best of Freundinnen, um, and we had Bookbeat for them as um, as a partner, he just really the host really you know had a look at the product, was impressed by it, does actually use it. So um, if he tells you about, what was it, uh, a minute or two, how he uses the service of BookBeat, then this leaves something that, that impresses people. And yes, they are in more than one episode, maybe they are in three or four. And I would also say, like Vincent said, it you don't have to book like uh, a whole episode, uh, 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 like five episodes or something. You can say, okay, I take like three <coughs> and then I make a break because that can be annoying for the people who love the podcast. So what we try to do is always offer our partners and our podcasters different um, companies and services so it remains fresh. The acceptance of, of commercials in podcasts is very, very high. And I think we have to take care that it's, uh, it stays like that. And uh, what Tina just said is uh, also one important thing that uh, the example with Best of Friends and that um, the host um, did the read about one or two minutes. So you really have to have time to explain your product, um, which is also on B2B or B2C level very available to uh, yeah, really explain uh, your product and then you, um, as, a, as a listener, really know what uh, the product is about. And then it's also, uh, I think, a, a factor um, which uh, pushes the, the high conversion rate, that everybody knows what the product is about. Okay. I would like to open up the round for questions from the audience before we, we finish up on this. Um, okay. Are there any, any questions? Uh, is the advertising mostly going through an outside agency or direct to the podcast themselves? <laughs> um, well, it, it, it kind of shifted for us. Um, you know, we, we get way more um, agency, uh, way more agency contacts right now. Uh, but sometimes, uh, like with Flo, it's, um, it's direct with the brand. It's probably 50-50, something like that. Yeah, I would agree to that. You have both sides to it. Advantages to one or the other? Much more fun with, with the brand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it, it really depends on the product and the company. Hi. Um, so in, in my company, we're actually doing podcast advertising as a performance marketing channel. Um, I work at Blinkist. And uh, what we noticed is that we started with US and then we moved to Germany. And we've seen that the CPM, and CPM I consider like uh, for 1,000 listeners, is crazy high in Germany. We are talking about three or four times higher. Can you explain why? 
<laughs> That's a good question. Um, I experienced the same. Um, I think if you look at the structure of, of the market here, um, I mean, in, in, in the US you have 25% of the whole population listening to podcasts. Here it's about, I would say, uh, maybe tw yeah, 13, 15%. So you have less uh, less people listening to podcasts. You have less agencies, and you have more and more media companies, like media agencies, um, booking through them, and that drives prices cr crazily um, up. And we're suffering as a brand, and we're spending less and less on on podcasts, to be honest. Um, but I think there, I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, how we build the price is um, um, there are three factors actually. So it's a, it's the reach. Uh, so how many listeners have uh, has one episode? Um, it's a target group. Um, we also do a lot of uh, digital business podcasts, so we know this is a really a high valuable target group. And um, the third one is also that the podcasters have their own um, price in mind. And um, we actually, um, I mean, we, we do this now for almost three years. And there are some podcasters, I, I mean, I don't want to blame them, uh, but um, they have a crazy high impression of uh, what their podcast should be worth uh, hosted because that's uh, the, the baby. They take so much care of this content and they say, okay, if I make advertisement now, I need that kind of money, otherwise um, I can't do it. So um, we kind of, uh, we, ha we had cases where we talked down the podcasters like 50% of the initial price. But that's what we're working with too, to, to, to get um, both sides a good price, the podcaster and the advertiser. Um, yeah, but, but that's also a challenge because uh, the podcasters, um, especially two years ago, this, they, they didn't know what it means <laughs> to do advertisement. Uh, that was the first time, and so they didn't have a feeling for it. And, um, but the podcasters that we are working with now for, for that um, amount of time are uh, understanding it more and more. And uh, I think that helps everybody. Thank you. Uh, I was curious when you were saying you're matching people, um, advertisers with different types of podcasts, do you think that there are any uh, markets in terms of audience that are underserved or are there any formats that you wish there were more of? I'm kind of thinking personally about like the difference between like you have uh, digital business podcasts, which I assume are mostly talking heads. I listen to lots of those, but there's also room for fiction or maybe more journalistic or and I'm just curious what you think there might be room for. Yeah, I think you're right. I think there is much more room for journalistic, investigative journalism in, in Germany. True crime is just evolving, you know? And I think uh, more podcasts about diversity, um, I think that would be great. And I totally believe in fiction um, because, you know, it's such a beautiful way to tell a story. Um, so it has this huge impact on t on telling stories. So I think this will be, you know, sort of an outlook to the next years that there will be in an increase in the quality, how things are narrated, but also the diversity of different sort of formats that you have. So if you have, to, if I want to get started with advertising and podcasts, what's the one key takeaway? What's the one thing I need to know to get started? from you as a, as a brand? Um, testing. I mean, um, I, would su I would suggest test different formats um, and do your homework before. Um, these guys are doing a good job on consulting. Um, that helps. But you should also know who, who your target group is and, and what the audience of the, of the, of the podcast is. I think the, the first thing um, for a brand is um, just to get to know podcasts and podcast advertising. What we actually did a lot in the last years was going to the agencies, going to the brands and explaining at first what a podcast is, what the state of podcast is, who's, um, yeah, who is listening, who's listening in America, who's listening in Germany, what's, what's the difference, just to educate on, on podcast and podcast marketing. And then I think you have a good, um, good basis um, to, to, uh, to do podcast ads in the next step. But yeah, that's what we 
we did actually um, for a long time now and, and still doing it um, just to educate first. Um, and we had a lot of um, appointments where there was no deal <laughs> out of it at the, in, in the end. But um, I think it helps in the long run to educate and then um, you, you think about it in the next campaign. Okay, it's not TV, not um, online, it's also a podcast if you think about it um, as well. Yeah, I would just add, you know, just listen. You know, if you uh, uh, like audio, then just listen. Uh, try to uh, discover new podcast formats uh, that you like. And we are also always very interested in, to know what podcast you like, what you prefer. And, you know, the last thing I, I could add is just call us. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect ending. I think the same goes for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> so please give an applause. Thank you very much.